Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, I'm Rebecca Shrub, Director of Workplace Experiences. And today we are learning more about how to transition to a plant-based lifestyle with Jill Edwards. Jill last week spoke on longevity and positive aging, and the resp response was enormous. And so you've asked for it and we're delivering. And we brought Jill back to delve further into the topic. I'd like to reintroduce Jill Edwards. Jill is certified in clinical physiology and a certified plant-based nutritionist. Today, if you'd like to put your questions into the chat, we'll answer them at the end. Uh, so let's turn it over to Jill and hear what she has to say today. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me. And for those of you that were on last time, I really appreciate you coming back. I tried to make this presentation as comprehensive as possible, um, but Rebecca will be taking questions. You do have some along the way. And then if your questions don't get answered by the end, you can always email me. And my email is at the bottom of the screen, uh, jedwards at nutritionstudies.org, and I'd be happy to help you out. What I'm gonna be talking about today is 100% uh, plant-based, and then people can um, sort of use the spectrum of how far they wanna go. I figure everyone pretty much knows how to include animal products into their diet. Um, so I don't cover any of that. I just cover kind of how to 100% go into um, a fully whole foods plant-based diet. And then again, it's up to you whether you wanna incorporate that one meal at a time, a week at a time, et cetera. All right, let's get moving. So first, uh, quickly, for those of you who weren't on last week, I wanted to define what is a whole food plant-based diet. Um, it is a diet that's based on real growing foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. It excludes meat and that includes chicken and fish. Uh, dairy products and eggs, and it minimizes refined foods, um, like, you know, fl uh, refined flour, added sugar, and added oil. This diet is different than a vegan diet. Uh, vegan just means that it excludes animal protein or animal foods, um, but it doesn't really talk about what it should include. Um, so again, I said last week, Twizzlers, Oreos, uh, Coca-Cola, those are all vegan, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're healthy. This is what your plate could look like um, on a whole food plant-based diet. So a lot of color, uh, fruits like apples, bananas, figs, grapes, strawberries, oranges, uh, all the vegetables you can think of, tubers, uh, such as sweet potatoes, potatoes, yams, carrots, and beets legumes, including kidney beans, chickpeas, also called garbanzo beans, uh, lentils, black beans, et cetera, and then wonderful whole grains, such as millet, quinoa, barley, rice, whole wheat, oats, et cetera. So I have this approach, and it's funny, I use this for um, when I work with kids, and we, I have them get up and move, like, here are your green light foods, and they get to move, and then we go into the yellow light where they move slowly, and then, of course, the red light foods, we stop. Um, because we're on Zoom, we will not be doing that. Um, but I wanted to still use the same analogy because I think it's very simple, um, but also very clear. So as part of a whole food plant-based lifestyle, our green or our go foods are our grow foods. So you can eat as much of these as you want, and that includes, again, all fruits, vegetables, beans, seeds, and most whole grains. So the green light foods are grown as opposed to being manufactured. They're really high in nutrients, high in antioxidants, and there are true plants that you can think of. So again, the colors of the rainbow. Yellow light foods are slow down foods, and these foods are wonderful to enjoy in moderation. So you can think of them that they're a little bit, you know, slightly processed, but still full of good ingredients. So most cereal, um, we could probably all agree on that that has some type of processing to it, and some cereals are better than others, which we're gonna go through in just a second. Most bread undergoes uh, a processing, um, uh, a processing, Thing, for lack of a better word. Um, but again, some breads are better than other according to what ingredients are. And then yellow light foods might include eggs, dairy, lean meat, and, and fish as part of this. So again, I'm going to present um, going fully whole food plant-based, and then it'll be up to you on how far you want to take this. And then processed food, but real ingredients. So always important to read the label. So an example of a cereal, that would be a yellow light food, so slightly processed, but all real food ingredients. So if you look at the ingredients here, it's rolled oats, shredded wheat, um, whole wheat kernels, whole flaxseed, 
barley, ground flaxseed, and freeze-dried bananas and walnuts. So all foods that we recognize, there's no refined flours in this and um, no added sugar, no added oil, and no added preservatives. So processed, but still a real whole food. Red light foods. So these are foods we just wanna stop and think, take a pause. And when we come across red light foods, you know, maybe thinking about making a different choice or just eating a smaller portion of those types of foods. Red light foods are foods that are lower in nutrients. They're higher in calories, oil, and sugar. They may contain artificial sweetener and ingredients. And these would include things like lunch meat and fatty meat, cookies, cakes, candy. Um, most yogurt is full of sugar um, and artificial coloring, uh, chips, and uh, most protein bars that are out there. Um, those are gonna have all types of um, just added stuff that we don't necessarily, you know, want in our in our diet as a uh, uh, holistically hang on I'm gonna move this I have to move this uh, something out of my way there we go so here would be our red light foods and you know it's not a lot of color besides what's on the packaging because of course that's what our eye is drawn to is color so a lot of processed food is very very colorful packaging but on the inside it's just mostly brown and drab this is uh, a, a depiction of real food and how it goes bad. And then processed food, and if you look here, this is after 180 days of a McDonald's hamburger and french fries, it doesn't look that much different. Um, so uh, that is also something, it's lacking in a nutrient, it's edible, but it's really void of nourishment for our body. So in this comes the comparison as well. So, you know, what's the healthier choice? strawberries or mixed berry fruity snacks. I think we can all universally say that we know that strawberries are a healthier choice. But in looking at the ingredients, you can really see how processed food um, can go in such a bad direction. So the ingredients of strawberries are just that, strawberries. And then when you look at the ingredients of something that's promoted as healthy, zero fat, 100% vitamin C, no you know, added this or that, that they're actually not food at all. Um, so these common kid snacks, the first ingredient is corn syrup. The second ingredient is sugar. And if you were to combine those two into one word, sugar, that would be the highest ingredient on the, on the list. But they separate it out um, to do some sort of play work with labeling on the package. And then we can see there's artificial uh, coloring syrup. So basically this food is not food. It's, it's just sugar and chemicals. This is an example of a cereal um, that also is not um, necessarily considered a whole food. Um, it has a lot of isolated nutrients in there. So the first ingredient starts off fantastic, whole grain oats. But then if you look at the second ingredient, it's added sugar. Then we have oat bran, which is not oat, it's part of the oat. And then we have modified cornstarch. Then we have honey, brown sugar and syrup. And all of those grayed out ingredients, they're all just synonyms for sugar. So again, if you were to compile those into one category, that would be the very first ingredient of this cereal. And they would have to um, label it in a different way. Then we have salt, ground almonds to food, and then some sprinkling of some nutrients. So again, this is not necessarily a health food. You know, is it a better choice than maybe Apple Jacks? Fruit Loops, yes, but it is absolutely you know not the first choice, as opposed to rolled oats, just one ingredient. Um, you can make oatmeal using plant-based milk. Um, overnight oats are fantastic. Um, so many recipes out there that you can do that's so easy in a mason jar. You just pour some oats, some of your favorite plant-based milk, add some dates, raisins, cinnamon, fruit. Um, whatever you want. And then in the morning you have a delicious breakfast to go. Here's some other examples of, of food um, that you would think would be maybe clean food or food that even though it's packaged, um, doesn't have any sugar. And that is uh, just like a common chicken nugget um, that we would give our family. Um, starts off with you know a real food ingredient, chicken, water, then it goes into added salt and sugar. Um, natural flavoring is something that a manufacturer doesn't have to release their recipe. So natural flavoring can contain up to hundreds of ingredients um, that they don't have to list on the label. 
And then it's breaded with wheat flour, which doesn't, which is a refined flour. So it's not a whole wheat flour. Um, water, wheat starch, white whole wheat flour, yellow corn, corn starch. Um, so again, brown sugar. So this ends up being a food that potentially is high in sugar and refined flour, even though you're thinking it's, it's just a, um, a meat product. Where this is an example of a food that's in a box, but it's made from all whole food ingredients. So it's just brown rice and sunflower seeds, carrots and spices. And this brand, the Sunshine Burger, is one of my favorite uh, brand veggie burgers that are in the frozen section at the store. A, they're clean, and B, I think they taste great. They have a lot of different flavors, barbecue, Southwest, falafel, original, um, quarter pounder. So there's a bunch of good ones out there. Um, in the North, I know that Kroger has these um, and then Whole Foods as well. Um, they both contain these. And if you're living elsewhere, Publix um, near me in the South, um, they also have these sunshine burgers. So this would be an example of a red light food, uh, goldfish crackers. Uh, again, another staple um, if folks have kids. But when you look at the ingredients, these aren't food at all. Um, the first ingredient is a refined flour. Um, not any nutrients, they sprinkle in some bees, um, cheddar cheese, and then added oil and more added sugar. Um, so again, this is not particularly a wonderful snack for kids. So you always wanna go with minimal ingredients that you recognize. And something like mixing some almonds and some raisins might be a better, in a baggie, might be a better choice um, as a snack on the go. Again, really clean um, ingredients that still provide a lot of um, energy and nourishment to the body. Couple more. Uh, so uh, tortillas. So I love tacos and those are a staple in our house. Um, but again, not all tortillas are created alike. So this particular common brand is the Mission brand tortilla. It's ground corn, good start with lime and water, and then it has some added gums and some acids um, for preservatives. So again, not necessarily all whole food ingredients. These tortillas, 365, you can get these on Amazon Prime or Amazon Fresh uh, or directly at the store. And there's just three ingredients. It's just organic corn, water, and lime. So a much better choice. Um, again, all whole food ingredients and taste is not sacrificed. So what are some breakfast ideas? You know, we've talked a little bit about labeling and the difference between green, yellow, and red light foods. So, you know, what can we how can we make real meals out of this and have it taste delicious and, and be pleasing to all members of our family? So what I've done is I've included some of um, my favorites that I've done and I tried to make things as simple as possible, but I feel like breakfast is the easiest place to start for most folks. Um, you know, banana pancakes, I have a, a recipe that I'll provide later that's from three ingredients. It's banana, oats, and almond milk in a blender. And you just put them on a skillet, two minutes on each side, and I serve them with applesauce or a little bit of maple syrup. And they're a fantastic, quick, delicious breakfast. Um, vegan French toast, I say vegan because not using um, egg. So there is uh, the something called aquafaba, which is when you have chickpeas in a can and you drain them, that that juice or that liquid that the chickpeas are in is called aquafaba. And that is one of the best whole food plant-based substitutes for egg. Um, so I made cookies last night. I did um, almond butter, um, some coconut, little coconut sugar. And again, that's an added sugar. So again, these are a treat more so than a staple. But instead of an egg, I used three, two, uh, excuse me, three tablespoons of aquafaba um, as a binder instead. Sprouted wheat toast with almond butter, simple three minute breakfast, um, green smoothie. Um, and there's so many fantastic smoothie recipes out there. Um, this morning, uh, my smoothie was hemp milk, kale, ginger, uh, mango, a little bit of cucumber, um, banana, and oh, I think I had a half an orange in there. So again, kind of a kitchen sink smoothie. Whole grain bagels, my favorite cream cheese is Kite Hill. You can also find that at Kroger in the North or Publix or Whole Foods. Um, Kite Hill is made from almond milk and there's no added fillers or sugars. It's just pretty much almonds and enzymes to make it into that cream cheese and they're fantastic. Um, I mentioned already overnight oats or oatmeal, um, cinnamon raisin would be a delicious one. And then again, looking for those cereals that don't have those added sugars and oils and ingredients kind of those Franken ingredients um, with your favorite plant-based milk and, and fruit. 
Uh, coconut milk yogurt, there's a ton of fantastic yogurts out there, but again, you want to watch the added sugar. So what I always suggest is buying the unsweetened plant-based versions and then maybe drizzle just a little bit of maple syrup um, with some fruit uh, or uh, dried dates that, you know, that gives it some sweetness. And then something as simple as apple slices with a nut butter. Again, just trying to throw some ideas out there for everybody. Lunch and dinner. So if you felt like you've tackled breakfast and want to move on to lunch and dinner, and I like that we did this uh, presentation after lunch, so no one's starving and looking at these delicious looking pictures. Um, but veggie chilies, uh, those are so easy to make, so many beans you can throw in there. I have an Instapot. Um, I think I mentioned in my last lecture that I love to eat healthy, but I actually despise cooking. So I try to find tools and techniques that make life easy um, and make cooking very convenient. So an Instapot is a great investment um, that you can you know, throw things in and make soups and make chilies in a very easy manner. Um, bean and veggie tacos, as I talked about with those tortillas with lots of guac and salsa. Veggie burgers, either making your own or finding a, a clean store-bought one with greens and uh, possibly some baked french fries as opposed to fries, uh, fried french fries. Brown rice pasta, um, you know, there's whole grain pastas everywhere with just a simple tomato sauce. I mean, that's the easiest meal around and generally extremely kid-friendly. Um, pizza on a whole grain crust. Again, there's cauliflower crusts out there and whole wheat crusts. Um, you know, good gluten-free crust. Sammy's Bakery makes one that's made from brown rice and millet, and it's fantastic. Um, you can order them online, S-A-M-I Bakery. They are located in Florida. Uh, so if you are in Florida, then you can access them at most grocery stores. You know, a stir fry. Instead of putting chicken or beef in a stir fry, you can just make it a vegetable stir fry or add some, uh, some tofu in there or tempeh. Tempeh is fermented soybean and rice, uh, where tofu is just fermented soy. And then how basic is this? Just a nut butter and jelly sandwich uh, with some fresh fruit. So again, um, eating plant-based doesn't need to be complicated. It can be very simple as well. You know, some hummus and veggie wraps. And um, I had that for lunch today. I did a, a veggie wrap with um, some guacamole and I had, or excuse me, a little avocado. And then I, yesterday we had something called an untuna salad. So I had garbanzo beans that I smashed up because I remember I had the aquafaba to make the cookies yesterday. So that's where I got it from. And then I added some um, chopped red onion and some celery and added a little bit of buffalo sauce. So it was like a, um, a buffalo kind of untuna salad. Um, it wraps with lettuce and a little bit of avocado. They were delicious. And then whole grain macaroni and cashew cheese. A lot of recipes out there. Um, and then they even have some you know, boxed varieties. Again, just always reading the labels black bean quesadillas, soups, et cetera. So, I mean, the, the more that I find that people explore plant-based options, the more their options open. Because um, with the animal kingdom, you know, we only generally have like five meats that we have. But with plant kingdom, we have so many different options. So if you are trying to uh, replace or at least kind of crowd out animal protein from your diet, that there's just so many options to add in there. Okay, so that's some generalities about some ideas. Let's get into a little bit more specifics. So on our uh, site for the nonprofit that I work for, we actually have a plant-based diet sample menu. And I think this is great. It's a great place to get started. It's a great way to, uh, to think about um, just getting more ideas, more recipes. Uh, this vegan sushi power bowl is a good thing. I find that bowls, um, are something that's easy. Um, you could do burrito bowls where, you know, think of it as the bowl being the tortilla or the sushi power bowl as the seaweed that wraps up the sushi. That's the bowl and all the ingredients would go inside of that. This one's lentil soup with mashed potatoes. How delicious does that sound? And then again, doesn't need to be complicated. Carrots can just be a snack. Here is that three ingredient pancake uh, recipe that I had shared with you in breakfast ideas. And again, super easy. Um, black beans and greens over rice, and then uh, plant-based curry. And then this one is a baked steel cut oatmeal, a hearty kale salad, roasted chickpeas for a snack, and a black bean burger. And those look like sweet potato fries. So again, just giving you guys more options um, to really, um, you know, kind of hold in, hone in and get the um, creative energy 
working. Snacks. So uh, oftentimes people will be at a loss for snack because they're used to grabbing maybe like a cheese stick or a, um, a regular cow's milk yogurt and they need some ideas either for themselves or their kids. So I always include snacks as well in my recommendations, again, just to get the wheels turning. So, you know, the easiest thing is, you know, keep make it simple, make it convenient, pre-slice some vegetables, um, keep them on the fridge. If it's easy, we're going to be apt, you know, more apt to use it. If we have to like go into the fridge and cut up vegetables, you know, that may seem kind of daunting, especially if we're just in a rush and want a quick snack. Um, so again, convenience is key. And then serve those with your famous hummus or um, some guacamole, an apple or nut butter, avocado toast with whatever toppings you like. This is a really easy one and a kid friendly one is just find some good pita bread and top it with some you know, some uh, tomato sauce, basil, um, plant-based cheeses. There's tons out there, um, again, that are cleaner ingredients. You can even dollop some of that Kite Hill cream cheese on there. Um, it's so delicious. And then just other favorite toppings, toast oven for five minutes. Great snack. Plant-based yogurts. These are two of my favorite brands, uh, Kite Hill and Lava, uh, both for taste, but also because of the ingredients that are in there. Um, you know, no added junk. Nice cream in a blender, um, frozen bananas, cocoa, dates, nut butter, and milk. Um, gives you some easy and delicious, healthy ice cream. Air pop popcorn, uh, Lara bars, clean ingredients there. And then you can make up your own trail mixes as well. Quinn pretzels, um, also available at Kroger Publix. Um, those are more of a whole grain pretzel and they're uh, delicious. And you can combine those with some of your favorite seeds, pumpkin, uh, sunflower, and then your favorite uh, nuts and then mixed fruit. And then whole grain crackers and tree line cheese. Uh, tree line cheese is also one of my favorites because it is a plant-based cheese that's not made from added oils and all these ick ingredients. Remember, just because a product is vegan does not make it healthy. There's so many processed faux meats and faux cheeses out there that they're they kind of, you know, really uh, you know, processed ingredients that um, don't promote health either. So again, always reading the labels if something has a box or bag. All right, recipe makeover. You may have, you know, phenomenally, uh, you know, like a historical or traditional recipes that you love and can't imagine making changes. But, but that's how I find most people can kind of dip their toe into this is if they look at their favorite recipes and then say, okay, what can I do to replace this but still kind of uh, keep the flavor or the tradition alive? Um, so you can replace meat, you know, in your favorite chili with beans or lentils. Instead of ground beef and spaghetti, try, you know, veggie burger crumbles. Uh, you can make tofu or vegetable stir fry, you know, instead of chicken or beef. And then instead of an egg, like I said, you can use aquafaba or just ground flax seeds. And so I provided this for you guys as well. And this is really just a healthy recipe substitution resource. So, you know, how to crowd out meat, fish, and poultry, how to crowd out eggs, milk, um, what to do with cheese, uh, sugar, honey, or other sweeteners, butter, shortening, and fats, salt. Um, so again, this is a fantastic resource to help you thinking what you can use um, instead of um, the animal or the processed foods. And I especially love this one, the egg substitute, since we use eggs in so many things for binding. Um, and there's so many substitutes depending on what you're doing. So even uh, pureed fruit like apple or banana serve as a fantastic binder, binder, especially when you're doing more baking recipes. And that just gives you idea for you know, added oil uh, and again, dairy substitutes. But again, another um, resource for you guys that I think will be very helpful. Oops, let me get back here. And sorry about this, guys. There we go. So people oftentimes will ask me, well, isn't this expensive? And, you know, any type of eating pattern can be expensive. Um, but what I find is that actually plant-based diets, you know, this is actually considered the traditional diet. It's been called even a peasant diet because foods actually um, that come from plant-based true foods, you know, not processed in a box or bag, tend to be very inexpensive. So fresh produce goes a long way. Um, again, I live in Florida, so I'm lucky enough to have farmer's markets uh, pretty much year round, um, but depending on where you're at, you can still find 
uh, fresh produce or even nothing's wrong with frozen produce that again, looking at the ingredients that are just made from the produce themselves, like frozen broccoli, for example, should just can't contain the ingredient broccoli. Um, those are fantastic sources, especially when you're in the North and don't always have access um, to fresh local produce. Um, potatoes, whole grains, beans and rice, some of the most you know, cheapest foods around. And when you're creating meals around these staples, we, we tend to spend a lot less. And if you've ever been out to eat, generally speaking, the vegetarian or the plant-based option is the cheapest one. Um, so again, it is not something that you know, is, is, is terrible on the wallet and can be done in very much a financial uh, means that is, you know, a budget friendly. Um, I provided two resources for you, plant based on a budget, to give you a little bit more detail on how to shop and uh, ways to save money. And then also, what I've done is I've provided a document for a standard grocery shopping guide, kind of what to get at the grocery store, what to focus on. Um, so this is nice. It also includes just a quick video of uh, Dr. Tom Campbell. He's our medical director for our nonprofit. Um, and just again, some also some brand idea ideas, excuse me. So brands tend to change here or there. So, um, you know, I, 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 I hesitate sometimes I'm always giving recommendations for brands, um, unless I know that they're a brand that stands behind clean ingredients, um, because things do change. Like for example, Dave's Killer Bread got bought out. And when they got bought out, some of their breads don't contain whole grain ingredients anymore. They use more refined flours. So you have to read the ingredients on the Dave's Killer Breads, for example. But this is really user-friendly. And again, it helps to, again, get the wheels turning for um, what to buy and, and kind of where to start. Eating out. So um, with COVID, depending on what stage you're in, eating out may not be an option, um, but when it is, or especially with carry out, um, there's so many different options. I don't find that it's ever a sacrifice or difficult to find something that's you know, healthy um, pretty much wherever I, I go. Technology is your friend when you're trying to find plant-based meals you know, on the go. There's two apps that I absolutely love. One's called the Vanilla Bean app, and the other one is called the Happy Cow app, um, or you know, uh, the website Happy Cow. And, and what it is, is it, um, you can auto search where you're at at the moment, or you can put in a zip code and it brings up all of the restaurants around that have plant-based options. So I use this whenever I'm traveling. I used it when I was in Europe. Uh, we even used it in South America used it in Canada. It works, you know, pretty much everywhere. Uh, the only place it didn't work was in uh, China. So, but the Happy Cow app, again, finds you places all over the world and makes finding healthier options just very, very easy. But on the right-hand side, what I've offered is just some suggestions. Again, when you're going out, um, you know, what you can do to make just slight substitutions, again, just to kind of crowd out um, animal protein and refined uh, processed food. So Chinese is easy, you know, Asian in general is very easy. Um, they're very plant forward um, ethnicity for food options. So again, tofu is a staple um, in the Asian countries. Uh, so that's something that's always very easy to find. You know, of course you wanna get it where it's not fried tofu or tempura uh, would be another word that they would use in the menu. So again, more steamed, um, options would be better for that. Thai food, you wanna watch the fish sauces. Um, so that would just be thing you would ask for without fish sauce. And generally what they do is just replace the salty fish sauce with a salty soy sauce. So it's just a, a simple substitution. Indian also is extremely um, easy. Um, Indian cuisine uh, is very, very vegetarian friendly. So if you're trying to cut back on dairy, uh, then that's something you wanna make sure there is no ghee, which is a clarified butter, cream, or yogurt in any of the, um, of the foods that you're ordering. And then Greek, Middle Eastern, you know, the Mediterranean diet is also extremely plant forward. You know, hummus, tabbouleh, lentil dishes, uh, veggie sandwiches. So again, you would just avoid the cheese and the animal products on there. Mexican, super easy. Uh, again, instead of uh, cheese or sour cream, 
Um, oftentimes people will have other uh, options, you know, whether it's sauteed mushrooms or whether they have like a tofu chorizo. Um, there's, you know, even places that have plant-based sour cream and plant-based cheeses because they're becoming a lot more mainstream. Japanese, very easy. Italian also couldn't be simpler. I mean, what's more simple than a delicious pasta with a red sauce? So again, you would just hold the Parmesan cheese. And then Ethiopian, one of my favorites, um, that's also extremely veggie forward. So not as hard as one would think. You know, even going to a steakhouse, um, you know, there's always, uh, you know, baked potatoes and, and veggies and uh, lovely salads that you can get um, when you're, you know, going out even to something that you would think would have no options for you. Traveling, so we talked about happy cow and vanilla bean as apps that you can use to go out to eat. But what also is kind of neat is there's so many different travel companies out there that are geared towards plant-based eating while you're with them. Um, these are three um, companies. I have traveled with Vegan Travel, Vegan Cruises um, in the past. So we were supposed to go to the Galapagos Islands um, in October and that was pushed until next October. But what it is, is all the food that is on these trips they serve you is all whole food plant-based um, it's you know um, it's all you know pretty healthy food um, and they even when we have group stops um, at different places for example we did a, a river cruise up the Rhone with this company and hit all these wineries and then uh, vegan travel made sure that they had um, healthy snacks you know um, plant-based snacks for us at every winery we went to so delicious French uh, cheeses made from cashews and almonds. And it was just so great to you know, experience those with the French wines and, and just great. Uh, veg voyages, uh, many of my friends have been on those. Those are, um, they are again, all around plant-based eating, but then also adventure um, hikes in Thailand and um, Iceland adventures and, and just um, some great options for that. Uh, and then world vegan travel, um, that's geared more towards going to places and learning about local culture, sustainability. Uh, but again, then the food is sort of built into those trips as being more plant-based. So kind of cool, kind of neat to see so many businesses that are out there um, and uh, when we are able to travel again more freely. Um, you know, I, I hope, I would love your feedback if anyone ever decides to take one of these. Cause again, um, I just find them really easy. Um, I've never been one to go on a group trip or something that's planned to the T, but sometimes it's nice just to have someone else make the plans and uh, knowing that you're going to always have, you know, good, clean uh, plant-based ingredients is, is takes the stress out of the travel. I included another resource for you for how to travel on a plant-based diet as well that you might be interested in. And that um, talks about like road trips and what to pack or, um, you know, what, you know, um, how more technology that you can use when you're traveling to try to find healthier options. Kids, gosh, I get asked this all the time. My kids just won't eat healthy. And I say, well, gosh, you know, are your kids paying the bills or are your kids grocery shopping? So you're the one as an adult that is generally doing the grocery shopping. And so there might be some resistance, but over time, when kids see parents modeling healthy food behaviors, and they're only given the choice of X, Y, and Z, um, they tend to evolve. Our taste buds, including our children's, take about 21 days to change. So if our kids are used to very highly processed foods that are strong and added sugars and oils, chicken nuggets and um, fishy crackers and uh, mac and cheese, um, you know, that's gonna take some time for them, their palate to change. So even just starting to incorporate more uh, fruits and vegetables into the diet can be helpful. And then again, just starting to crowd out some of those foods that aren't advantageous. The biggest help I find is that when kids are in control of what they eat, even if it's a facade, um, they tend to be more apt to eat those things. For example, I volunteer with the elementary school in my neighborhood, their community garden. And it's amazing, the kids that work in the garden they're so excited to be able to eat and try the tomato that they had, were a part of growing when they're at lunch. Um, so it's neat, they just get excited because again, they had control over growing this item and they just get excited to try it. And of course, they always think it's more delicious when they had a hand in it. 
And the same thing goes for cooking. Um, kids who cook become adults who cook and eat healthier than those who don't. Um, so that is something that you can help even starting at the age of two. Um, kids can get involved in the kitchen, even if it's just helping or adding ingredients to a bowl, um, getting a step stool and getting them right in the mix. Um, but it's also nice because it brings the family together. And it is something that really, again, in the mind of a child gives them the control that they have a say in what they're eating. Our kids have so little control um, in terms of what they think. And so that's oftentimes why they resist on eating things because it's truly the only thing that they can say no to. So they have control over what they're putting into their mouth. So again, if, if they feel they're making these choices um, and they're um, bringing these meals together with their families, they're more up to eat them. It, this is a neat idea. Um, my neighbor does this with her kids is every Monday. Um, they are not a whole food plant-based household, but they try to crowd out animal protein um, and especially uh, dairy um, a couple days a week. So they make their kids in charge of meatless Mondays. And it's fun to see what their kids come up with. And their kids are five, seven, and eight and a half. So um, the kids are in charge of creating the menu. Uh, and this, they do this on Sunday and then helping to grocery shop for it. And then they get excited and they wanna eat this healthy meal that they've concocted together. So, and also really teaching your kids how to read ingredients for kids when they get to reading age. Um, so they can, they can watch and see my niece when she was little would be so funny, you know, and showing her how to read ingredients. We'd be at the grocery store and she'd be like, this is, this is not good. This has added sugar in it. And I'd be like, correct. So again, giving kids a little bit more power, um, really helps, um, them to eat healthier in general. Uh, awesome resources here that I've provided. One is again, cooking at every age and why kids should learn to cook, but it breaks down by age. Um, so it just makes things just a little bit easier to get kids involved. And then one of my coworkers wrote seven tips to get your kids to eat more veggies. So even if you are still going to eat, you know, meat at most meals, we still want our kids to consume veggies, right? So this gives some um, great suggestions for how to add them into the diet and have them be accepted by our kids. So the biggest thing, you know, the takeaway I have here is, you know, keep it simple. Um, again, not everyone wants to go 100% whole food plant-based, um, but it's important that we are incorporating uh, more foods of the rainbow into our diet. And of course, real whole foods as opposed to the food coloring donuts on the right-hand side. I provided some additional resources that I feel are um, just a great kickoff way to get going with this. Um, number one is eight steps for successful transition to plant-based eating. It talks about what to keep in your kitchen. Um, it talks about what appliances to get to make this lifestyle a lot easier, uh, you know, to obtain and to maintain. Um, the nonprofit that I work for, we have a plant-based seven-day kickstart, which is great. So every day you get some resources and you get uh, a meal plan for the day and then some uh, you know, additional helpful tips. Uh, I included another few articles, how to replace dairy with plant-based ones. Um, that one tends to be a big one for folks. They just wanna know more options for that. And then just overall recipes, um, created a link for that. Uh, this, this book uh, by Dr. Joel Furman is fantastic. So I always recommend this to all the parents. It's called Disease Proof Your, Do uh, Your Child. And again, it, it really provides some fantastic uh, resources um, to really get kids to eat, you know, a healthier um, diet. The cool thing about eating more plants and crowding out animal foods is that number one, of course, the health benefits. And number two is the environmental uh, benefits and then the animal welfare benefits. So health benefits, you know, number one, it, the only diet that's ever been uh, clinically proven to reverse heart disease is a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, weight loss, lower blood pressure, cholesterol, lower rates of cancer, but the environmental benefits are substantial. So I run a certificate program that's all on food system and sustainability. And it's amazing um, the carbon footprint that especially factory farming um, presents. You know, it conserves water, it saves animals and plant habitats, it lowers our ocean dead zones. Because with so much factory farming, we get that nitrogen runoff that tends to create dead zones like we have in the Gulf of Mexico, um, which is detrimental. 
And then of course, animal welfare benefits alleviate suffering and deaths of animals. We lower air uh, and water pollution because of that. Um, in some of the communities that um, the factory farms are located in, uh, their communities have been devastated by pollution and erosion and waste. So, and that's in South America, especially for deforestation, uh, for making the way for livestock. So again, it's, it's kind of neat when you incorporate more plants, it's not just for personal reasons, but you're also, you know, doing benefit for your planet and for our fellow species as well, which is neat. So, you know, the biggest thing, if we're just going from a personal perspective is, you know, we get one body. So, you know, might as well take care of it. It's the only place that we're, we're gonna live in. So we wanna nourish it and we wanna provide the, the proper fuel uh, to keep us going for many years, as we talked about in the last lecture with longevity. So, yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share, um, but I am, would love to take some questions right now. Great, so we've got the first one in and the person says they do not like tofu. What would be a, a great alternative? Sure. So, um, yeah, tofu is not for everyone, but I always find if you don't like tofu, you haven't found the right marinade because who likes boiled chicken? I never did. So, you know, boiled chicken or just plain, you know, ground beef with nothing added to it sometimes can be, you know, not very tasting. So um, if it's a marinade thing, it's finding how to uh, marinate it. Um, again, I'm a huge buffalo sauce fan, so I love to put buffalo sauce and everything. Um, my mother-in-law hates tofu, but I make these baked tofu sandwiches for her and I marinate in pickle juice and then serve it with lots of sauerkraut and she loves it that way. But if you're just like, uh -uh, nope, it's not for me. Tempeh has a different texture um, and it's also a, you know, a really good option. And then again, you know, there's everything has protein in it, even a banana, even grapes. So if you're trying to think about, you know, getting the protein at the center of your plate, everything is protein. That's why I hate focusing on macronutrients. So even beans, that could be a, a great substitute for, um, for tofu and different things as well. Great, that kind of probably segues into the next question, which is what are the best plant-based foods for on the go on our busy lives? So that um, one resource I gave that is the travel um, on the travel page in my presentation that gives a ton of suggestions, but trail mixes are always really easy on the go snacks um, that I find that you don't have to keep cold or, you know, refrigerated or in a cooler. Um, again, almond butter and jelly sandwiches. So a lot of suggestions, but that resource will have just a ton of on the go snacks for you. Great. Uh, the next one's on press juice, and it says particularly smart press juice, such as pineapple chia cleanse. Um, what, are you, what are your uh, viewpoints on that type of? Yeah, actually, there's a lot of um, proven examples for how juice cleanses can be beneficial for us. Um, you know, it, it is something that we just don't want to drink juice all the time. Um, but yeah, so clean. Uh, you know, fresh pressed juices, especially when they are veggie forward um, and maybe have fruit as an additive in there, like a green juice with apple um, or even like a pineapple, um, beet, carrot, uh, ginger, um, those have their place as well. So again, the beginning of the year, every year I do a three-day juice cleanse uh, myself to kind of, you know, the aftermath of uh, the last part of the year always, which is always not always the healthiest or we're maybe indulging a little bit more in spirits. So yeah, three-day ju juice cleanse can have its place. Great. Uh, the next one is, what is your favorite egg substitute? Ooh, well, it depends on what I'm doing. So like, you know, I use the aquafaba and the cookies and that's so easy, you know, like three tablespoons of aquafaba for one egg. There is a product out there called Just Egg that is made from long beans and it, and it kind of tastes just like scrambled eggs. So, you know, that's an option as well. Um, if you're baking any type of uh, fruit puree um, can be an egg or ground flaxseed, two tablespoons of water, let it sit for about 10 minutes and then it emulsifies and that becomes a binder for just about anything that you're doing. Great, the next one is, if someone's gonna have soy milk, is it better that it's non-GMO and organic? Yes. So, you know, uh, GMO, there is, you know, some controversy about that, but my thought is, is, you know, we want to go back to basics and we would prefer things that didn't have those, you know, pesticide laden ingredients or uh, pesticide resistance, which what GMO is um, mostly been used for in our country. So yeah, so organic soy um, would be the best route for um, soy milk. 
And then again, making sure that in your soy milk, it should just say organic soybeans and water or organic soybeans, water and vanilla. There shouldn't be any kind of added junk in there or isolated soy. Great. Uh, the next one is, is, can you recommend a meal delivery subscription that's plant-based focused like purple <gasps> carrot or- Oh green? my gosh. Oh, I forgot that slide. Shame on me. There's so many good ones out there. So Plant Pure um, is fantastic. Plant Pure, P-L-A-N-T-P-U-R-E. Um, that's a really healthy one. Um, Purple Carrot, Thrive, Vistro. There's so many good ones out there. If you just were to do a Google search for plant-based meal delivery, um, there are so many. Another one, which is my favorite, they make the most decadent mac and cheese is Mama Says, M-A-M-A-S-E-Z-Z. -Z. One of my favorites. Great. Um, we have one who wants to know um, if you can kind of review for vegan meals, how to get enough amino acid. Sure. So remember protein, we are not protein deficient. We are fiber deficient. Um, so that narrative has been really um, kind of pushed on us um, by, you know, some larger people at hand or, or corporations that it's their incentive, you know, like the Got Milk campaign and um, that we need milk to thrive. So those types of things, it again, it, if you look at um, the uh, populations in the world, which we talked about last week, you know, they are focusing on, you know, clean, mostly plant-based foods for their protein. So in terms of amino acids, all right, essential amino acids can also be found in all plant foods. They're just in different ratios than animal foods, which isn't always a bad thing. Um, we have complete proteins, and you probably heard that term, that are located in buckwheat and quinoa, uh, and also in soy. So those would be your complete protein. But remember, traditional diets tend to pair things, beans and rice, um, you know, those types of things complement each other and provide all the essential amino acids. We don't need to worry about pairing them at one meal. You could have a banana and then later on have some nuts and you're going to have a full package. So it's not as important to combine foods to get those essential amino acids. As long as the diet is varied, um, that's the most important way to get all of those amino acids in. Great. We've got someone who's grateful for the recipe websites because they're picky eaters. And it looks like we have just one more question left and it's, um, can you use just eggs as scrambled eggs? Um, this person usually eats them, uses them for cooking, but not for eating. Yeah, so you can use them for scrambled eggs. Um, you can add just a little bit of plant-based milk to them and some sea salt and pepper, um, a little bit of turmeric. And uh, yeah, you, you got yourself some scrambled eggs. Okay, it looks like we just got another one that popped up. Can you suggest a recipe book for vegan smoothies? Yes. So there's a couple out there. Uh, Brooke Goldner. Um, and it's, it's interesting because she said she has two books, both on autoimmune. One is on lupus and one is say goodbye to autoimmune. But if you look online, her smoothie recipes are fantastic. And then she has the smoothie recipes in her book. Um, there's another one that's uh, new out. It's called How Not to Diet um, by Dr. Michael Greger. And that one also has good smoothie recipes in there as well. Okay, good. Um, oh, let's see, did we have another one pop up? We just had another person say thanks so much. Um, and we do, we really appreciate you, Jill, educating us on transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle. If you'd like to view this session again, you can visit our website at vegonet.com forward slash flourish, where her last session is also uh, ready for your watching as well. Um, Jill, thanks again, and thank you all for joining us. Until next time, have a great Thank you, time. everybody. I really appreciate it. Bye.